All right, here we go. It is time to dissect Frank Saravelli's Trade Targets Board and how it relates to the Montreal Canadiens. Take a look at this from two days ago. Trade Targets. Decision time looms for the Toronto Maple Leafs and Mitch Marner. Of course, Marner is the top candidate, and he will remain that way until he does get traded inevitably because we all recognize it's going to happen, right? Either way, though, what I wanted to do in this video was focus on the Montreal Canadiens angle of it because Sarah Valley did provide some interesting scoops on the Habs. If we scroll down in this trade targets list, which will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read it yourself, let's go over to number 14 on the list because listed here as a right defender for the Habs is 33-year-old David Savard who'd scored himself 24 points in 60 games, played 6 goals, 18 assists, and who has one year remaining on a $3.5 million AAV deal. Here's the scoop from Frank Saravelli. Last summer, the Montreal Canadiens unloaded another veteran defenseman in Joel Edmondson on July 1st in exchange for a third and seventh. Savard is in a different position as a right shooting defenseman where there is a premium, but so are the Canadiens this time around. They will need a veteran presence to help shepherd the young guys through their lineup this season. But Montreal also has a bit of a logjam on defense, with plenty of right-shot guys coming. The Canadians will be listening on Savard, even if they end up keeping him through the summer, to begin initial conversations in the lead-up to next year's trade deadline. So, this is not really the most surprising thing in the world. But, as we had come to learn over the past few weeks here, David Savard is one of these guys that the Montreal Canadiens, they kind of like, and he himself likes being a hab too. There's a good mutual admiration with both of these parties. But, as with all rebuilding franchises, you have to go out there and acknowledge the facts. David Savard is 33 years old. He's probably going to be a lot more useful to a playoff contender team rather than Montreal. Like, sure. You can say the Habs are in a position where they could try to contend for the playoffs and they could maybe squeak in, this and that, anything can happen if you make the dance, but David Savard on Montreal is more so of a calming presence, a veteran leader guy on the back end that's really important, not just in terms of his experience and his age, but in terms of how he calms down the room. That being said, though, What's calming down the room if you're getting eliminated in the beginning of May, pretty much, and the Montreal Canadiens are not really in a position to be a top-tier cup contender while he is still 33 years old? If David Savard gets sent over to some other team at next year's trade deadline, then he could be a pretty big addition to help out on the back end of a Stanley Cup championship contender. Savard has had some pretty significant time in the playoffs in the past. I mean, he literally was on that... Tampa Bay Lightning team when they ended up defeating the Montreal Canadiens in the finals in 2021. Yeah, nice to rub old salt in the wounds there. But even beyond the Tampa Bay stint, his multiple years in Columbus were greeted with a few playoff runs, some a little bit deeper than others, some in the second round, others absolutely not. But still, David Savard has been this dude who has worked himself up over and over again, and now, after his third season as a Montreal Canadiens D-man, you can say that the time may be looming for Savard to end off his career as a member of his hometown team. Not because the Canadiens don't like him, but because other teams will like him, and there could be a good amount of value the Habs could get in return. With that being said, this is just one of the two names that Frank Saravelli goes out there and talks about on this article. We can go over to the other one, scroll down in this piece to the number 18 spot, and you have 28-year-old center, Montreal Canadiens guy, Christian Dvorak. 30 games played this previous season, 5 goals, 4 assists, 9 points. He's got one year remaining at $4.45 million AAV. Now, Ay ay ay, those numbers. Not great. 9 points, 30 games, I get it, you know? Dvorak was hurt, and we needed to be patient with this guy, and I get it, we were patient with this guy. I don't think there were any Canadians fans that were really hating on Christian Dvorak for a good chunk of the year. And the fact that he wasn't playing, of course, that helped, but still, when he was in the lineup... He wasn't really that big of a talking point, even though a lot of people could acknowledge, yeah, he wasn't really up to speed, he wasn't really as productive as he could have been, he wasn't really this, he wasn't really that, but I think a lot of that is just because, yeah, he was hurt for so long that we don't really have our attention on him. And even when he is in the lineup, it's not like we're paying too much attention to Dvorak after all. Sure, the reason he was acquired by Montreal in the first place was because of the Jesperi Kotkaniemi offer sheet and all the compensation that Mark Bergevin and co. got at that point, but still, Christian Dvorak is a guy who, as a third-line center, two-way capable guy, hasn't really been as much of a needle mover as you would have hoped. He hasn't been bad, per se, but he's been very replacement-level. 
And that isn't really a good sign if you're looking at the Montreal Canadiens as one of the worst teams in the NHL. They're literally drafting fifth overall. The fact that they were like on the cusp of a playoff race for a good chunk of the second quarter of the year was kind of nuts, but either way, you know, baby steps, you got to work your way up. Want to talk about the Frank Saravelli write-up, though. Here's the scoop. Christian Dvorak has struggled to stay healthy during his time in Montreal, missing 96 games over his last three seasons. He was acquired by the Mark Bergevin regime in September 2021 from Arizona in exchange for a first and second round pick, one of which is in this year's draft, 37th overall. It's clear that Christian Dvorak hasn't worked out with the Habs. Even when healthy, he hasn't been able to break through the ceiling that initially indicated promise in Arizona. Montreal will be moving on from him. The only questions are when, now or later, and how. Trade or free agency. So, Saravelli is going out there and suggesting that Christian Dvorak could find himself out of Montreal soon. If it is via a trade, then great, the Canadians will get stuff in return. But when it comes to the contract, if he does not get traded... There isn't really a possibility the Canadians re-sign Christian Dvorak, and quite frankly, I'd have to agree. We had seen reports earlier yesterday that Tanner Pearson was already confirmed to not coming back with Montreal, and that is not a surprise, you know? I'm sorry, Tanner Pearson, but you're just not an effective NHL player anymore, or at least one that's worth taking away a younger player's roster spot for. And for Christian Dvorak, you could say he's pretty much the same thing. Not as old as Tanev, of course, I mean... Or Tanev. Tanner Pearson, excuse me. Completely different names. But Pearson was a guy in 2012 that was an overager. Dvorak was drafted in 2014, so it's a little bit different there. A little younger, but still the impact, you know, what you're getting out of these guys in the lineup. It's not really all too important nor significant. Doesn't move the needle much. So for Christian Dvorak, the question is, do you want to see this guy come back and take away a valuable roster spot for a guy like Owen Beck, for example? Or would you rather see Christian Dvorak ride it out with Montreal and eventually just leave up and away in free agency, go to some other team, sign a very cheap deal, and then have a Jonathan Drouin-like resurgence like we are seeing with the Colorado Avalanche? I think, of course, you'd like to prefer to get some stuff back. Christian Dvorak isn't really the most valuable guy I'd see on the trade market, but at least getting something in return would be seen as a win. I mean, the Habs traded away a first-round pick for him. I get it, it wasn't Kent Hughes that made that move, but still, going down the Mark Bergevin timeline and talking about stuff that bled into the Kent Hughes era, it would be kind of bad to trade away this first-round pick and these assets for a guy that was really injury-prone and whom the Habs would only trade away for significantly reduced value compared to what they got him for. So, Christian Dvorak, if they trade him, awesome. I just hope they end up getting a good amount of stuff in return. But if it doesn't look like a trade is going to come, then we'll probably see the end of Dvorak in the form of free agency. He'll probably just go somewhere else, maybe the AHL. Or if he's trusted enough to get an NHL spot, maybe sign a $1 million deal elsewhere. But for now, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about these two guys, David Savard and Christian Dvorak, being labeled as potential trade chips on Frank Saravelli's top 20 trade targets list? It will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read everything else yourself. But Montreal Canadiens fans, what are your opinions on Savard and Dvorak? I'd say from my perception, Savard is definitely the more liked asset, the more valuable guy here. Christian Dvorak has just kind of fallen off a cliff, to be honest, and it's very unfortunate that he has done so because he still was a pretty good player earlier on. But Savard versus Dvorak, what do you think about the idea of trading these guys away? What are your thoughts on the roster spots that would be opened up by making some sort of a trade? And who do you think should fill that up? Is it an Owen Beck? Is it a Logan Mayu? What are your thoughts on who should come up and replace those minutes? Let me know in the comment section below. It's all your floor. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>